What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a DSG service. And for that, we're gonna be using my 2019 Golf R. Now this seven speed DSG service is a tiny bit different than the older six speeds. The biggest difference being the filter placement. Even though this does have a serviceable filter, Technically, you don't need to replace it, except for a few cases where you have some sort of transmission failure or issue. So if you're just doing basic maintenance, technically by the book, you don't have to do the filter and the filters are not cheap, but I think if you're gonna do the fluid, you might as well go ahead and do the filter too. Used to be able to do it and not make a mess at all. Unfortunately, this one does kind of make a bit of a mess. Now, like most all Volkswagen and Audi transmission services and other things like Haldex services, the big thing is you wanna make sure that your car is level. So all wheels off the ground when we're draining and we're filling, but most importantly, when you're setting the fluid level. Now you're gonna need a couple of tools that may not be super common, but also aren't really Volkswagen Audi specialty tools. You're going to need a 14 millimeter Allen, you're gonna need a six millimeter Allen, eight millimeter Allen. You're also gonna need a ratchet and an extension. And of course, to get the car level, you're gonna have to get it off the ground. Always make sure you're lifting your car properly and safely. You're gonna need something to catch the fluid you drain. You're also gonna need something to fill the fluid back up. Now, I'm using this fluid filler that you pump up and pumps fluid into the transmission. If you don't wanna go that route, I'll link up a tool that screws right onto the bottle that works pretty well too. Now, something else that's not a thousand percent mandatory, but you really should have is a scan tool to monitor transmission temperature. Like almost every Volkswagen transmission, our fluid level is set at a specific temperature, generally 35 degrees Celsius. So you wanna have a way to monitor that temperature. I'm gonna be using VCDS, but if you're using something else, the process is pretty much the same. Okay, first thing we need to do is we need to get this big old belly pan out of the way. Now I have the all track belly pan on my car so it covers quite a bit more. If you don't have the all track pan, you still really do wanna take the belly pan off and get it out of the way. So we are servicing the DSG. What I wanna make sure I point out is what we're not servicing, which is the engine, or the bevel box, which is this piece right here on the all wheel drive cars. This piece is a separate service from the DSG. You can actually see the drain plug right over here on the passenger side. So we're not gonna be working anywhere near this bevel box. In fact, the bevel box technically has no service interval. We may at some point do a service on this, which will probably be just a drain and fill. So if you're over here and you're like, I wonder if this is the drain plug. It's not. Don't touch this piece right behind the engine oil pan. Now there are a handful of things that make this service a little bit different from the older six speeds. Our drain and check plug is in a little different of a spot, but this is pretty close to how the older ones were. But we also now have a mechatronics unit drain plug right here on the front, really close to the driver's side belt skirt. So we're gonna be taking both of these out during this service. We're gonna start by pulling the plug that's a little bit further back. This is called the check plug, and this is a 14 millimeter Allen. I'm also gonna capture this fluid because I really wanna see how much comes out. Now you'll notice that is just a tiny little stream of fluid because we actually have a sleeve up inside of the check plug that once this kind of backs off on draining, we're gonna pull next. Once that fluid kind of slows down its trickle, you're gonna wanna take an eight millimeter Allen and go up into that drain hole. And then usually these are only about hand tight and twist this guy out. This one is one where you're gonna get a good amount of fluid coming out. So make sure you have your drain pan primed, ready. I did good on the first one. I'm nervous how much fluid I'm gonna make a mess with on this one without also dropping my socket. No, not too bad. Better than I, oh, ah, I spoke too soon. Let that drain while I clean up my mess. Okay, now while that's kind of finishing its drain here back at the check plug, we're gonna pull the mechatronics unit plug and let that drain as well. This is a six millimeter Allen, the one a little bit more towards the front of the transmission. And I actually don't know how much fluid we're gonna get out of this guy. Probably a pretty good amount. Oh, Jesus. Oh, well, ah, there we go. <laughs> Well, I was right. It is a pretty good amount and I made a giant mess on the floor. Okay, well, really here, it's best just to let it drain until you get as much fluid out as you really can. Now, leaving a little bit behind, probably not gonna be a that big of a deal, but 
this is not a service that I ever like to rush through, so just let it drain until you're really not getting much fluid coming out at all. So we'll wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Okay, once you're pretty much done draining the fluid, take that little sleeve and go ahead and reinstall it. This will thread in and you really only need to tighten it hand tight. So what I'll do is I'll thread it in till it's kind of snug, like once the thing stops and then I'll just take my hand on the end of my socket and just twist it and make sure it's snug. And that's really all you need. Next, we're gonna put our mechatronics Next, we're gonna put our mechatronics unit drain plug in. The torque spec for this, 10 newton meters plus 45 degrees. And if you feel like you need to put a torque wrench on everything, the torque spec for that insert is three newton meters. So do with that what you'd like. Here we go. Go 10 newton meters, which is not very tight. And then we'll do another 45, which is half of 90, which is a quarter turn. So usually you probably just eyeball that if you don't have an angle wrench, which gets you right about there. And then clean up any drippage you might have. Okay, we need to get our filter done next. And unlike all the other variants of the DSG that were super easy to service, this one is kind of a pain in the butt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some pig mats, or if you don't have pig mats, you can use paper towels or whatever. I'm gonna kind of stuff them up here between the subframe and the transmission so that we can catch any fluid. We're gonna try and mitigate the mess that we make as best we can. My expectations are pretty low for being able to actually do that. Then what I did was I tore a half of a pig mat in half like this. And if you look up where the filter is, there's a small channel underneath that you can kind of see. My goal is to shove that pig mat that I tore in half in that channel so that whatever fluid does come out ends up on the pig mat not all over the transmission. I'm gonna go ahead and get my drain pan underneath. So what I rigged up to get to it from the bottom is a 24 millimeter socket on a swivel with an extension and a ratchet. Now you could probably get this from the top too, taking the air box out, things like that, but I feel like there's really not a great way to get at this one. So you kind of just got to do your best. Hope for less mess. Oh wait, here we go. Do your best, try not to make a mess. That's, that's the saying. Okay, oh, there we go. Oh, it's loose. Okay, we are loose. And I don't see a giant flood of fluid just yet. Probably coming. Okay, I think I got it loose enough to shove my hand up here. And I, I picture the amount of fluid just gurgling out of here. So we're just gonna go quick. Oh my gosh, oh gosh. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Much as, I, much as I expected. And let's go ahead and get the filter itself out. And now we start cleaning up the giant mess that we made. Oh, it did, it caught some. So I caught a good amount. Oh, that caught a bunch. Okay, feeling all right about that. Now you really need to do a good job of getting all this fluid out of here because you do not want to have a pocket of fluid and then park on an incline and have a big old leak. Okay. Next up, we gotta get our new seal on our filter housing. You got a seal spoon or a pick. Just work that old seal off. Work our new one on, which weirdly does not come with the filter, which I find to be kind of silly. By kind of, I mean extremely. So we'll take a little bit of fresh DSG fluid and we will put that seal on. And of course, like always, make sure that seal is properly seated in the channel that it goes in right there. Now I was talking to an Audi friend of mine and he said what they had seen every once in a while is that when pulling this filter out, because it pulls straight out of the housing, this bottom piece actually can separate and this will stay inside the transmission. So you really wanna make sure a couple of things. One, when you get the filter out, it's complete. It has this back plastic piece with the seal in it on there. And then it's not a bad idea to look up into the transmission and be sure that you don't have anything left below. Otherwise, he said the filter will go on. And if you like have the touch where you'll be able to feel something's wrong, you'll notice it. But he also said he could easily see someone if this is their first time doing it, just shoving the filter on, screwing it back in and going to complete the rest of the job. So be sure you get all the bits of the filter out before you put the new filter in. Okay, then we take our filter and slide that filter on up. You'll hear, you'll kind of feel it click into place. Then we'll take the housing and get that installed as well. And the filter torque 
is 50 newton meters, which feels like a whole bunch for that. So make sure you get it good and snug. Then I'll probably throw a towel up there and just clean up any leftover potential mess that uh, I probably have. Okay, next up, we gotta get our fluid into our little fillilator here. Uh, the repair manual calls for 6.3 liters. So I'm gonna put all seven that I got in. Whether we need all of that or not, I don't know. I'll save one of these in case we have leftovers, we can drain it back in. Okay, next up, we are gonna take our threaded adapter and screw it to the bottom of the transmission. If you got the other style, uh, you'll do that because we're about to pump some fluid in. And again, pretty similar in the way they function. Then we'll put our little fitter guy up there, open our dinghy, and pump away. I'm trying to get about six and a half liters in. Then we'll fire up the car and we check this fluid level pretty much like we do every other Volkswagen transmission. Now we need to bring the car down, open up the door and start the car. With our VCDS hooked up or any other scan tool, we're gonna go into address word zero two, which is transmission. Then we're gonna go into advanced measured values. That's gonna pull up a list of all of our information. And if you don't see transmission temperature right away, just type in temp in the search box and then it'll pull it up. As you can see, our fluid here is pretty cold, so we're gonna have to let that warm up quite a bit. You also wanna make sure that you put the transmission in each gear, park, reverse, neutral, and drive for roughly three seconds to be sure that we have our fluid circulating. Okay, so I have the fluid filler still hooked up, and what I did was I opened the valve and threw the little switch right here so that the excess fluid can drain back into here. This will help us set our level properly. So we're only at 22 degrees Celsius right now. And as the temperature goes up, the fluid level goes up and the excess will drain back in to our little holder here. That'll also tell us really how much fluid we ended up needing, which <laughs> I got a liter in here as it is. So we probably would have been fine with six, even though repair manual says 6.3. Once your transmission hits 35 degrees Celsius, you should have a tiny trickle of fluid coming out go ahead and put the drain plug in and torque it to 45 newton meters. And I probably shouldn't have to say this, but make sure you use a new crush washer. Now, if you're watching the fluid coming out as you're bringing the transmission up to temperature, you may see some fluid come out and then stop and then fluid come out and then stop. This is a normal condition, don't worry about it. It's just fluid pulsing through the transmission. This is actually something I think kind of unique to the seven speed because I never remember any other DSG doing that. Okay, so there we go, pretty straightforward on the DSG service. Remember the seven speeds are doing 80,000 miles and you technically don't need to do a filter. Also, you don't actually have to run the basic settings on the mechatronics unit simply when you're doing a drain and fill and a filter change. That's generally reserved for if you have an issue or if you're doing a repair. Also, when you're done, you wanna make sure you take your car on a pretty good test drive and shift through all the gears, make sure that it's behaving properly. I'll of course link everything you need for this DSG service down in the description. With that, I'm out, have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye.